So let's analyze my behavior and get to the bottom of it. First of all, I would assert that I am the most responsible person on the planet okay? because of how I act relative to other people. I have refined maturity and responsible behavior through the martial arts system. Okay, I am response-able. Response-able. It's right there in the word. What it truly means to be responsible is actions. I rose to the occasion. I saw the problem. And I'm willing to accept the suffering to respond correctly. That's what being responsible is. It's saying, hey, you know what? I, wanna, I just drank at the bar and I want to drive home. Okay? And I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be responsible, even though it's going to cost me money to get a cab or it's going to cost me effort. And, you know, I just want to just kind of just go to the car and just drive home. So it's, it's suffering quite often it comes with responsibility. Suffering comes with responsibility. So number one, I would assert I'm the most responsible because of my higher martial art path. Okay. And refining responsibility and maturity and the martial art principles. Okay, and putting out the martial art challenge for the specific purpose of responding to the problems in the world. And that suffering comes with responsibility. So my, my speeches are going to reflect, therefore they're going to reflect a certain suffering. Okay, which also comes with caring. So they reflect caring and suffering. Okay, so those three points are very key. If I'm the most responsible person, how could I be mentally ill? And if I am, it must be a good thing. So if I was, it is a good thing. What is it stopping me from doing? The righteous man, and we see this in many cultures, the Christian culture, Jesus, John the Baptist, they stop everything and they prioritize morality. And they try to reason using scripture or whatever is available. So if I was, it is a good thing is point four. Now point five has to do with science. Neuroplasticity. I am forging my brain, and I have been historically, with martial art movements, okay, which they sabotaged, you know, because they took they, they took an irresponsible angle of putting me on psych meds, which sabotaged my body form and my vision. And I'm not at liberty to say whether I take them or not. But one thing's for sure, that it is irrefutable that there is a pronounced effort to drug me, right? I'll, I'll pull from my kind of medication status. There's a prolonged and pronounced effort to drug me, and it causes me eye problems and problems with breathing that ultimately affect my ability to do martial arts. So they're basically drugging, one way or another, okay, on record, the most effective and responsible martial artist who comes out and combats evil with a focus on good. There isn't a focus on a religious system as such. The focus is on the extracted moral focus pointed up. You don't see a single martial artist anywhere doing that. They're all limited by the bounds of their system or they do not rise to the occasion. What good is your angle if it is just for you and you are a recluse somewhere not trying to spar mentally with evil? Okay? It is, it is like somebody saying that the top martial artist and not responding to my top martial artist challenge. When I come from a long line of royal African martial artists, I'm this huge guy, surgical father who cuts into people's heads. And I brought this up many times as a 6'4", 6'5", guy, weighs like 270 pounds or something. He's cutting into people's heads with a certain refinement of movement. Okay? I've shown, uh, I, I've shown the world record speed, one, uh, 15 hits, 1.2 to 1.4 seconds, and so on and so forth. I've posted my, the videos of my matches in a sabotage form. I was able to perform flawless victories for the most part, okay? And only in the mud, which greatly slowed down my footwork, feet and feet are connected, did my brother manage to score a few points out of 10. Okay, my brother who's known me for a long time, right? And in the sabotage state where he's not sabotaged. So obviously, they were stupid if they didn't take me seriously. So the overwhelming evidence screams, and it is insane to ignore the overwhelming evidence. And what do psychiatrists do? Based on the evidence available, they make a diagnosis. They don't, they don't judge you based on brain scans. They haven't done me that way. They do it based on the behaviors, the, the, the stated system, symptoms. There is no symptom that is getting in the way. So now let's look at the scientific evidence. Neuroplasticity, again, forging the brain. You know, the cortex, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the thalamus, the striatum, the mortar cortex, gray matter, white matter, the different regions and parts of the brain. The fact that I even bring these things up off the top of my head screams a certain understanding of human behavior, a certain ability to, uh, uh, to be introspective 
okay, to reflect on my behavior. I have thousands of videos that I've reviewed, his, uh, you know, and, and I've saw exactly what's wrong with me from the first point, person point of view. Okay, we also see that Harvard and Stanford have done studies where they show that cognition, memory, and thinking skills, specifically thinking skills, are connected to health. Right? Health. Uh, exercise, excuse me. To exercise. Exercise improves cognition, memory skills, and thinking skills. So when we start to put this together and we look at Leonardo da Vinci's argument of the Renaissance man, the brain and the body, we look at eugenics, scientific racism, social Darwinism, the eugenics, David Starr Jordan, Stanford, mere 45 minutes an hour away, is Stanford University, whose founding president was a eugenicist, David Starr Jordan, who believed in reproducing towards superior stock on the son of two doctors. We look at their own argument, it comes short of there's something wrong with this guy other than conflict and diagnosis from people from the political opposition when their own, op their own argument includes this like, Psychiatry is highly political. Psychiatrists have wrote about the relationship between this. This is a psychiatrist, uh, the CIA, and uh, uh, um, uh, psychiatry. And the CIA obviously has a relationship with clandestine operations, propaganda operations, uh, rivalry in sports events such as the Cold War, and so on. Okay, and it, it, it go, has everything to do with upholding the white supremacist, uh, eugenic, white establishment, propaganda narrative, which includes Israel, so it includes a certain degree of Jews because Israel is America's ally. No conspiracy theory, mainstream politics, mainstream history. We look at APAC and whether it is powerful or not, it exists, it's influential. For whatever reason, Israel has its way for the most part with America. So this is the evidence, right? You know, America is corrupt and we must consider who in, in the midst of corruption gets their way with America the most, who benefits from it the most, right? Obviously, if it's corrupt and there's benefiters, the two are connected in some way. All right. So again, I've asserted that one, I'm the most responsible person in the world. I used a mor morally responsible, response-able, right? It has to do with morals. It is immoral and it is self-destructive, right? For the wrong reasons, not going to war for a good cause, mind you, but to drive a car drunk. I used the example of, of, of go drinking at a bar and not driving yourself home. Okay. Suffering comes with responsibility. We see all these happy yuppies. It's, it's a good sign that they're not responsible. When people are gay, quote unquote, you're in happy and, and in, in high spirits, right? And when everyone else is suffering, it's a good sign that they're not responsible. So people are being drugged based on their indifference, you know, based on their lack of indifference, right, mind you, and their ability to be irresponsible enough to be a conformist. Number three. When I, I have a certain ability to reflect, and I reflect my responsibility, I reflect my suffering and my caring in my speeches. When someone has a good be reason to be upset, they don't have to have a mental illness to express that reason. I also have to, over 10,000 sources. I have always books everywhere and magazines that have everything to do with the things that I'm talking about. And they're, they're, they're published by respectable publications and authors and all that good stuff. Okay. So... You know, all these books, everything to do with eugenics and so on and so forth, the rising sun, you know, colonialism, I'm well researched in this, uh, the sports gene, which is a really a warrior's gene, this book talks about this, we go on and on and on and on. Other martial artists' perspe uh, perspectives about things, right, Master He Il Cho, he talks about timing in life, he talks about how no system can be truly effective without an emphasis on sparring, and he's like a ninth degree black belt or something like that. It is insane to ignore this sparring challenge from this person. It is irresponsible to ignore it and to pretend that you are as good or better than he is. It is dishonorable as well. Okay, so none of these other martial artists can be seen as responsible. And none of these other paths can be seen as uh, uh, as, as a res more of a responsible path than the martial art path. And that has to do with the mind, body, soul, spirit. Making It's the most demanding exercise. It makes one the most able to respond. If you're going to be responsible, make yourself able to respond in your long-term life repetition. So I'm going to put a picture at the end of this video real briefly that uh, illustrates my point. Now that we've ruled out the fact that I, could, that, that, that I have a mental illness, and if I did, that it's something that has made me a better person than everyone else and should not be addressed, I suggest you all stop acting like bitches because you're disgracing yourself to the extreme. Not a little bit, a lot.
as the most responsible man, the person capable of measuring people. Martial arts has to do with measuring the spirit. What is this person blind? And I start moving, do, 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 do. Why doesn't he respond? What is it about his brain, among other things, and his philosophy that doesn't allow him to respond? Why doesn't he see the heart in me and my ability to strike effectively over here, for example? So you have to truly have this wholesome approach to analyzing other philosophies and systems, which is part of what I've done in the process. You look at my uh, martial arts challenge, why I've made it over those four years. I'm making YouTube videos the whole time, made YouTube videos leading up to that, and I made it clear that I have an understanding of what other people think and what other people believe, and I, I explore all the major philo political philosophies, all the major spiritual philosophies, I, I destroy atheism, agnosticism, I destroy feminism, I destroy New Age philosophies, and everybody basically teams up against me instead of conceding my point because they're not honorable or responsible uh, or, or have the moral clarity which I link to mental clarity. Moral clarity is mental clarity, and mental clarity is moral clarity. How, what's, what better way to judge somebody's mental clarity than how moral they are. Again, what better way to judge someone's mental clarity and their, and their mind than their moral actions? Conformist actions in a corrupt American state, especially in this current state, are inferior to transcendent moral actions. Thank you.